Hi, my name is Nick Whirl, and I am with Atlantic Laser Scanning Services. Today, we're going to take a look at working in Ferrocene. We've got an outdoor project that was scanned around uh, piping and some large tanks. We're going to register this scan uh, in Ferrocene. You can do this in Recap or things like that, but today we're working in Ferrocene. We are not going to use any sort of uh, targets for registration. This is going to be a top-down and cloud-to-cloud -cloud registration process. Uh, we'll get into some of the reasons for that here in a minute. Um, many people that have not done this sort of scanning that are using a scanner like the Faro Focus for the very first time have basic questions about this type of scan work. Um, if they're not going to be using targets, uh, a lot of times they just want to know what are the, some of the things that they can uh, do in the field to avoid uh, creating problems and headaches in the post-processing registration part of, of your uh, project. Uh, number one, you do not want to scan uh, on opposite sides of an object or a building. You want to work your way around it. So in essence, if you're, say, scanning a, a car, you would scan one side of the car and not jump to the other side and scan the other side because the uh, software needs to see the last scan position, at least most of the last scan position in order to put the scans together. So you would scan uh, the side of the vehicle, the corner of the vehicle, then the next corner of the vehicle, and then you're on the other side of the vehicle, working your way around. And you would do the same thing in a large scale uh, type project like this. You want to make sure that the scanner can clearly see some of the geometry from the previous scan. Uh, also, being that the Ferrofocus scan units, regardless of whether they're the uh, X330 or the S series 150s and 350s, uh, while they may have a range of 330 meters, 350 meters, 150 meters, 120, the two to five millimeter accuracy for, with these scanners is going to be in that first 70 to 80 feet. So, when you're moving the scanner throughout a, uh, an open air or maybe a large building uh, scan project, you just want to make sure that you are, are not moving the scanner more than, say, 100 feet if you're in an open space because you want the scan radius to overlap between, uh, you know, scan one and two, two and three. And just mathematically, if we say we scan uh, and every 100 feet is what we're jumping, we've got an overlap at the 50-foot mark, which is still well within the 70 to 80-foot range. So if you continually, say, scanned uh, in a straight line, you'd be able to maintain, if you're along the side of a building, you'd be theoretically able to maintain your uh, 2 to 5 millimeter accuracy throughout the project because the, the uh, scan radiuses are overlapping each other. I don't recommend necessarily scanning at that far a distance between scans, and a lot of that makes a difference of what you're actually scanning in your scope. But let's go ahead and jump into the, uh, the project here. We've got 11 scans, and we are going to, as I said, not pre-process with any sort of target, so we're going to jump straight into registration. And the uh, center of the screen here, you see perform perform automatic registration, which we're going to choose. The default method of automatic registration is going to be top view and cloud to cloud, which I described earlier. The default settings, we can go ahead and just leave those as they are. Up the right hand corner, register and verify. At this point, we let it cook. And in a few minutes, we can come back and take a look at our project. Okay, we've got a registration uh, ending here. So it is asking if we would load the scan point cloud to take a look at it. Uh, just based on the location of these uh, scans, it looks like everything's come together rather well. Um, we can see where we started, uh, number 20 to 21, 22, worked our way through the area uh, and around the tanks. So uh, based on this, I believe that we're going to have a pretty good outlook. Go ahead and do uh, click yes on the left hand side and then we will go into the correspondence view in the next screen and take a little better look at it. We'll go to registration dashboard and then explore. 
Now at this point, it's a pretty good idea to go ahead and save the project. What that's going to do is uh, allow the dashboard to not be carrying as much as it would if you were just to continue to go on and on and on with the process without saving. So we'll go ahead and save it. Now we can go to the main scans folder here on the left. We'll just right click on that and go to view and correspondence view. What this is going to do is ask if we'd like to load the point clouds. And as you see on the left hand side, each of these scans is going to uh, end up with a, uh, a blue block next to it, which means that it's fully loaded. And as that's happening, you can see on the screen uh, that we've got colored point clouds loading at the same time. The reason this is going to be significant in the correspondence view is each one of the point clouds from each of the scans is a different color. And you can see the overlap between the scans. And again, back to what we spoke about before, uh, if we've got good overlap between scans one and two, two and three, three and four, we are going to have uh, good coverage and more accuracy with the overall scan project. So as we can see, everything looks very good. We can look at that from a different angle here. It looks as though our elevations are right. All right, now to be easier on the computer, we'll go ahead and unload them all, all these scans. And let's take a look by just double clicking on one of the scans. This is called a quick view. And our project shows up in 2D was initially colorized we went ahead and took the color out for this one of the things that I do recommend is to not colorize the project during your initial registration and the reason being that if you're outside you can get an overexposed scan uh, because you know, possibly the way the Sun was when the the scanner was going through the photograph process and if something like that happens it'll just be a, a you'll be looking at just a white uh, screen here when we're looking at our quick view. Uh, constant, you know, on the other side of that, if you're indoors and you do a scan and there's low light, it may just be too dark to see anything with the photograph. So by looking at the scan project prior to adding any color, uh, you end up with this crystal clear uh, look at just this. This is just laser points that have touched things. It looks like a black and white photo. It's going to be crystal clear whether you're scanning in the dead of night or the middle of the day. So we've got a really nice looking project here that's come together. We've got green lights. And prior to us exporting this, we're going to go ahead and add color to it. So this can be done simply uh, by going to the scans folder on the left, the top part here. We'll right click on that and go to operations, color pictures and apply pictures. This can be done on each of the scans if you'd like. It can be done all at one time if you'd like. Now, just so you know, if you decide to do this and there's a couple of scans that you can't see anything on and you have to go back and work with them later and do some measurements, the uh, process to remove the color from the scans is just as easy as adding the color to it. So we'll go ahead and add the uh, color to the entire scan project right now and then we'll just take a quick look before we move on to the exporting process and show just how we're going to remove this color if we need to colorizing the scans in a small project like this may only take a couple of minutes uh, it's another thing if you're doing registration and you're adding color at the same time Obviously, it's going to just add a little time to the registration process. Um, but again, uh, the workflow that most people are going to use is to do the registration without adding color. Take a look at their project. If they need to do any measurements on anything, they do it prior to adding color to it. 
uh, so they can have a clearer view of everything that's in the scan. So we will let this go through its process here and then uh, quickly go through removing the color and then move on to a uh, recap export. So we end up with an RCP RCS format in our files. Now the project is completely colorized, we can take a quick look at one of the scans and then we will just show how to quickly remove that color in case you need to. It is coming into focus here as it builds up. There it is. Again, if we go to a particular scan, we can right click on it, go to operations, down to color pictures and restore gray image. By simply clicking on this, it's going to ask us if we would like to do it. We say yes. It removes the color. If there's something that we need to do any measuring or if we need to look at something specifically, we can do the measurement. Um, then we can go back and colorize in the same exact way as we just removed the color. So now we can go and export our project. We're going to export the project and not the scans individually. Go ahead and do a save. And we're going to choose recap project ordered scans because we have done the registration. There's no need to uh, do any registration in recap when it, uh, when it's exported this way. Our location, we have a correct location and all we do is simply export it and wait. What we're going to end up with is a completely registered project exported into RCP's RCS file format so that it can be pulled into Revit, really any number of, um, of Autodesk auto uh, Autodesk iterations that they have. So that would be really all you need to do in scene if you are looking to put your project together. If you're not using Recap 360, uh, you've now transported the entire registered project into a file format that you can pull in and work with immediately. If you have any questions, please let us know. If you have any ideas or problems that you've run into in your own scam projects and you'd like to suggest something that we touch on in any of our upcoming videos, please let us know. Thank you.